Okay, let's go ahead and learn how to write a fraction as a decimal. So that's the topic of this video. And uh, you're going to want a calculator to actually follow along. And here I have uh, a couple of example fractions, one-half, one-fourth, one-third, two-sevenths. Matter of fact, if you know how to find uh, the values, the decimal values of these respective fractions, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. And then, of course, I'm going to go over these particular uh, problems and some other ones. Okay, But uh, if you basically know how to find, um, take a fraction and write it as a decimal, then that's excellent. So this is pretty basic math, but there's some, a couple of little twists here that I think a lot of students uh, you know, need to review to completely get this. But I'm going to go ahead and just give you the spoiler alert, spoiler alert right now. How do we find, how do we write a uh, fraction as a decimal? You simply divide the numerator, okay, which is that top number, you divide that by the denominator. Okay, so you go into your calculator and you literally go, like for this particular uh, fraction, one half. Now, hopefully all of you know that that's the decimal equivalent 0.5, but just go ahead and take that one and divide it by two and you'll see that 0.5 uh, show up on your calculator. So we're gonna do the rest of these problems here, but that is uh, basically all you need to do. However, we need to be able to interpret the results of these decimals, and I'm gonna get into that in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, uh, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math courses. Now, if you're taking any test that has uh, math on it, so what I'm talking about are tests like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, end of course exam, uh, nursing school entrance exam. There are so many different type of tests out there, and they all have this little pesky math section on there. So somebody thinks math is pretty important. I can help you prepare and pass those uh, various exams. If you homeschool, you must check out my homeschool math program. Very comprehensive. Uh, I've had a lot of homeschoolers through the years use my program with uh, great success. So again, check that out if you homeschool. Now, if you don't have any math notes, no panic. I'm going to leave uh, links links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you need to start taking your own great math notes, okay? This is so underestimated by students. I'm telling you, the secret to, uh, one of the main secrets to being successful in math is note-taking, okay? I've been teaching math for decades, and believe me when I tell you, I haven't come across too many students with great math notes uh, with poor grades. It just doesn't exist, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into how to write uh, fractions as decimals. So if you want to go ahead and finish up these uh, problems here with your calculator, uh, go ahead and do so. Now, don't feel guilty about using your calculator. Oftentimes, uh, some people think, oh, I don't want to use a calculator. It's cheating. No, there's a, the, your calculator is a tool, okay? You have to know how to program uh, and talk to your calculator to get the information you want out. But you shouldn't have to do this by, you know, long division, right? Now, of course, you want to know how to uh, uh, do basic division, you know, arithmetic, but that's not what we're talking about here. So go ahead and get yourself a calculator because, you know, we want to take advantage of the tools that we do have. But let's go ahead and uh, reinforce some things here. Okay, so again, how do we uh, change a fraction into a decimal? Well, we're going to take the numerator, which is that top number of a fraction, and we're going to start over here. I'm going to do this example in a second. And then I'm going to divide it by the denominator. So literally, and for this particular problem, we got 3 elevenths. So you're going to go 3 divided by 11. Okay, and that would, of course, be the equivalent of 11 going into 3. If you're going to do that by longhand, but again, I don't advise that you do so. Just go into your calculator, and you're going to get um, this decimal. Now, if you notice, what's going on here? It's 0.2727, and then I have dot, 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 dot. Well, this continues to go on in some pattern. You're going to see 2727, 2727, and it's going to go on forever. So this is what we call a repeating decimal, okay, a repeating decimal. So this is the little twist here that I want to kind of talk about when you uh, change a fraction to a decimal. You can get all kinds of different kind of scenarios. So let's talk about repeating fractions. So 0 0.2727. 2, 7. So how do we express that? Now, you can kind of write it this way. 
but really you want to write it this way, okay? This is 0.27, and this little bar over it means that the uh, the 27 is repeating. In other words, it's uh, 27, 27, 27, 27, etc. Now, an interesting thing is um, numbers that we can express as fractions of integers, like this, like 3 elevenths, we call these uh, rational uh, numbers, okay? Rational numbers. Now, there's a relationship between uh, decimals and rational numbers. Basically, when you have a decimal, okay, that is that represents a rational number, you can rewrite that decimal as a fraction, okay, precisely. Now, how you do that, that's a different video. But I want to just kind of uh, talk about uh, something here real quick. Let's talk about uh, the number pi, the variable pi, okay? So this uh, pi, you're probably familiar with, starts off as 3.14, and I don't have my... Uh, calculator in front of me right now, but it's, I think it's like 1517, whatever the digits are. Certainly 3.14 is the first <laughs> part at the beginning of pi. And then you have a whole bunch of other digits. Okay, now what's the deal uh, with pi? Well, these digits do not repeat, they, there's no pattern there. Okay, so uh, when you have a non repeating and a non terminating, in other words, the, the digits. Uh, pi just keep changing randomly. They're just kind of go on and on all the way out to infinity. Th this is what we call a uh, an irrational number. Okay, it's not rational. It's an irrational number because we could just never, never reach uh, pi. Now, if you look up uh, on the internet, uh, we actually have pi day. That's 3.14 or March 14th. And there's people throughout the world that celebrate pi. I love math, but I'm not one of these uh, folks to stop on March 14th and celebrate pi. Although I do recognize the value of this uh, great uh, uh, number. Okay, one of the probably the greatest uh, values in mathematics. But what I'm trying to get uh, drive home to you is that some decimals, okay, as they continue to go on, okay, and if they're not repeating. They might, you know, you're you're probably looking at if you're just given a decimal here, you you may not be able to express that exactly as a fraction because it's an irrational uh, number. Okay, it's non-repeating, non-terminating. Whereas you have a repeating uh, fraction like this, 0 0.27, 0 0.27. Although it goes on and on and on, you can express that as a fraction exactly, and that is a rational number. So you know, little things that we want to um, bring to highlight here. Uh, because when we're talking about changing a fraction to a decimal, you know, it's not just take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. We also want to recognize and be able to talk about these other aspects as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a mixed number fraction. So here, if, if you were asked to change uh, 2 and 1 fifth into a decimal, well, we want to write this as an um, a uh, improper fraction. So how do we do that? Well, it's 5 times 2, correct? 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. So uh, 2 and 1 fifth is the same thing as 11 uh, fifth. And then we can go ahead and take that 11 divided by 5. Now you could also take that 2, all right, and add it to 1 divided by 5. So you can go take that 1 divided by t uh, 5, get that decimal, and add it to the 2. But I think it's a little bit easier to just go ahead and write this as an improper fraction, 11 fifths, and then we can go ahead and take that 11 divided by 5 in our calculator would get 2.2. Of course, it would be the same way if you take that 1 fifth component and add it to that 2 as well. So whatever floats your boat, as long as you get 2.2 for that particular fraction, 2 and 1 fifth. Okay, so we talked about how to convert um, a fraction to a decimal, and uh, then obviously we talked about how to convert a mixed number fraction to a decimal as well. But now let's go ahead and finish up these problems that we had in the beginning. Now, some of these uh, fractions that you may encounter are some really common type of uh, decimals. Um, by the way, too, I don't know if I misspoke here. <laughs> Sometimes I speak. We're talking about changing fractions to decimals. If I misspoke, please forgive me. I make a lot of videos. But anyways, let's get back to it. So um, some values you should be pretty familiar with. So one half is equivalent to 0.5. That you shouldn't need your calculator. These are kind of like things that should be locked into your memory. Okay, so most of you probably um, knew that. Now, another one is one third. Okay, so one third is equal to 0.3. 
But if you take that one and divide it by three, you're going to get in your calculator 0 0.33333. It goes on and on and on. Okay. So uh, the more threes we use in an actual calculation, the more accurate our answer will be. Same thing with that 0 0.27 that we were looking at. Uh, when in practical application, when you want to use the decimal version of that fraction and you want to make your answer as accurate as possible, you want to use as many digits as possible. But yeah, we're here, we're just talking about writing a fraction as a decimal. So we have one third that's equal to 0.3 repeating. So I have to have that bar over the three. All right, so let's take a look at a fraction like one fourth. So if you take that one and divide it by four, you're going to get 0.25. That just, that ends. Okay, so there is, it doesn't repeat, it doesn't stop. So sometimes you do get repeating fractions and sometimes you do not. Okay, like 0.5 or one half for 0.5 and one fourth for 0.5. Now let's take a look at two sevenths. So if you have your calculator, go ahead and um, put that two and divide that by seven. And what you're gonna get is, you gotta be very careful here in your calculator uh, window. Okay, you're gonna see 0 0.285714. And then you're like, okay, this is not repeating. You're, you're looking at it, you're seeing this is like digits. I don't see any re repeating uh, digits going on. Well, what you have to uh, look at is just keep following the decimals out until it starts repeating itself again. So sometimes that could be like one, like in the case of point, uh, 0.3, or it could be 0 0.27, 0 0.27. You just never know, but look for that repeating pattern. So for two sevenths, it happens to be 0.285714, and then it repeats again, 0.285714, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. So again, we're going to put that bar over the repeating part of that fraction. So you, sometimes, you know, you're going to have to kind of look further down the line until you can kind of see that re, uh, where it starts to repeat again, and that's what you want to write. So that bar is very important. But sometimes you don't have that uh, with things like uh, one fourth. That's 0.5. Uh, one half or, uh, or 0.25, excuse me, and one half is 0.5. And then, of course, one third is 0.3 repeating, all right? So again, although it's kind of simple in terms of uh, the concept of how to write a fraction as a decimal, there are all these, you know, little twists here that we have to be mindful of. So anyways, if you knew how to do all these problems and you understood everything here perfectly, I must go ahead and reward you with an awesome little happy face with a good old 1985 flat top haircut. That was an awesome haircut. I used to sport that thing around. I don't see that haircut anymore. Um, I guess maybe I'm out of touch with style, but if I had enough hair, I'd still be sporting that haircut today. But let me go ahead and give you an A plus and a few uh, stars here uh, to make you feel extra special for doing a great job uh, converting fractions to decimals. But here's the deal, even if you didn't know all of this exactly, now, okay, you got to walk away from this video, you know, knowing more about this than you knew from the beginning of the video. And if that is the case, go ahead and smash that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. That's a lot of work, but I do it because I love to teach math in a clear and understandable way. That's my goal when I teach, uh, uh, mathematics to explain things easily, okay? You know, but not to water it down uh, where you're going to not understand, but, you know, teach it in a non textbook type of way. That's the way I like to teach math. So hopefully you like my teaching style. So please take advantage of all the videos I've done and I will be doing. So that's why you want to subscribe to my channel. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.